let's talk to animals. My name is Shannon Kutch. I'm an animal intuitive, sensitive, and Reiki practitioner um, at Animal Love Languages. This is Pearl Cuts, my 23-year-old ever-present feathered sidekick. Um, he is grumpy right now because it is way past your bedtime, right? Mm -hmm. We're recording this podcast in the evening, and he is ready to roost on my knee, and I promised him that after the introduction, he would do just that. So anyway, we are here to talk about all things animal communication. Um, what is it? How woo is it? How does it work? Who does it? Who can do it? How you know you're doing it? How to get started? All of that good stuff. And to support this mission, I have invited a series of incredible animal communicators, each unique in their own way. Today, we have Claudia Hare. And her website is Claudia, C-L-A-U-D-A-U-D-I-A-H-E-H-R.com. And I am so honored and happy to have Claudia with us today. She brings a perspective that's near and dear to my heart. We were just chatting a little bit about that before we started, before we hit the record button. And so I'm excited to introduce you to her and introduce her to you and um, just spend some time chatting about um, our favorite subject, animal communication. So welcome, Claudia. Thank you so much for being a part. Shannon, thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, yes, let's talk animals because that's my favorite mm -hmm. subject. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've been doing this work for, for some time now. Um, you've had a lot of major media coverage. You've had the opportunity to speak with a wide variety of different animal species. Um, but there was a time, and of course, um, what I love to do here on this podcast and blogcast, for those of you who are watching us on YouTube, um, is I love to kind of rewind back to the beginning, uh, because a lot of people are discovering that interspecies communication, or I would say rediscovering that interspecies communication is possible and kind of waking up to their intuitive abilities. And it all feels raw and new and a little scary and a little great and a little uncertain. And so can you take us back to, you know, kind of day one, um, so to speak, and, and share kind of how you woke up to this ability and how you got started? Day one was literally day one, like even my day one. <laughs> ah, fantastic. So basically, um, when I grew up, and I saw an animal, I just knew what was happening in the animal's life. I just knew it. And um, I got information. And for example, when I met a dog, I knew that it, like the dog was maybe not, was maybe abused or maybe not fed or not taken out enough. And I just knew that. And um, I thought everybody did, you know, it's just like, ah. that's so normal. And then when I mentioned things to, to because how old was I there, maybe four or something like, you know, really, really tiny. And I said, this man is not nice to his dog or this. And I was like, what are you talking about? You know, like, it, it, so because I thought everybody was getting the same information. So I couldn't also understand how people, how could you hurt your animal? How could you hit your dog? You know, how can you do that if you hear your animal screaming? So I didn't understand that. Yeah. And um I do have to say that I grew up in a very abusive childhood. Oh. And so I literally had to, when I came home, I had to be able to read my mom's mind to be yeah. able to know how to, can I say something today or do I do just my chores or, you know, like, you know what I mean? So I, to survive, I, I had to do that. And so, um, so basically this, this advantage is now my advantage because I had to learn it to survive. And so, you know, that's just what you do. It's that's telepathy, right? But I didn't know. And, and then when I was getting messages from animals, I mean, I didn't know you can talk with them because nobody did. So I couldn't ask anybody for any information, any whatever, if I said that, I mean, my mother, again, that was, that, again, maybe I was four or five at that point. I said to my mom, you know, this dog is saying this and this. And she said to me, Claudia, be quiet. Actually, she said, you know, yeah. said it a little, you know, different way. 
or people will come put you in a straight check and put you in a loony bin. So when your mom tells you that when you're that small, you kind of believe it and then you don't say anything anymore. So I kept it to myself, but that's kind of, so it came from day one. And then, so again, I couldn't ask anybody for advice. Like what's going on? Like, I don't know, you know, it was there and nobody else heard it. So why did I hear it? And what did I hear? And then so kind of over the years, you know, and then I finally, then I, you know, saw the movie Dr. Doodle and I thought, oh, I'd like to do that. Uh Uh-huh. Finally, somebody (laughs) gets it. (laughs) I I didn't, because when I communicated with animals, I didn't do it in a Q&A way, right? And I mean, the same thing when I communicate with animals now for my clients, it's the Q&A. If I connect with animals, I don't, I don't do Q&A. It's more like just an exchange, right? Like the wave comes in, the wave goes out. So I couldn't ask anybody for any advice. And then slowly but surely, you know, then at one point I heard animal communication. What's that? You know, and then I, you know, and I want to learn that and so on. And so that's kind of, then I took a course, just a beginner's course. And just to be introduced to telepathy and what it is and that we actually can really have a conversation with animals rather than just that flowing in and out. And then when I I did that uh, workshop and when I came home, I didn't hear anything anymore. And I thought that was the worst mistakes I've done. And then I literally had to start all over again. And yeah, I've been doing it for so long. I was literally beside me, I'm in Ontario. Canada and beside me there was only one other person in all of southern Ontario who did the animal communication it was just the two of us and everybody looked at us like really weird exactly you know and and uh it's so interesting you know because so, so many people who are drawn to this work um we do tend to come from a background where there's trauma or there's abuse or there's just a high sensitivity to the point where we tend to develop these not necessarily so self-healthy coping skills just to kind of make it through. And it's like a boot camp to develop intuition. You know, it's not something that only a few of us have, um, but many people don't discover they have it until later on when they, they, when they're, when they encounter a phrase or a word or um, a method that introduces them to their own abilities. It's like, I often liken it to, you know, how many times have you gone to your, your phone, you know, or your, your laptop or your tablet or whatever, and you're in the applications. I wonder if there's a calculator. I wonder if there's a screenshot. I wonder whatever. And you go and you look through the programs and you're like, hmm, what's this? I've never seen this before. And you just feel adventurous that day and decide to click on it and open it and download it and install it. And that's kind of like intuition for a lot of a lot of us. You know, maybe we find it by accident, maybe it works really well, but we don't really know what it's called and we don't really realize just exactly what you said we don't know that everybody else has this program um and we also don't know that most people don't know they have it and so you know i've found over the years i'm you know i'm in my fifth decade of life now and uh i've discovered over the years that so many people you know it, it, often you find yourself having these shallow chit chat conversations but then you know mention something deep like a pet passing and suddenly it's like there's this incredible depth to that person and you realize, you know, or, or mention um, having an angel experience or mention having a hunch or just a gut instinct about something, something good or something not so good. And there's this depth there. And it's like, I feel like with the internet now we're able, like, it's like, I'm able to connect with you. I'm in Houston, Texas, you're in Ontario. And, and from your website, I understand you, did you grow up in Germany? Is that correct? Yes. Correct. Yeah. And so here we are and we're able to, you know, and it's like, it's, it's just awesome the way. And so, it, you know, that's, that's one of the joys of, of um, sharing different communicator stories through this podcast. And I love what you said, and I want to go back to it. 
um, because you knew from a very early age that you had this, this ability and it was a natural thing for you. And then, you know, you, you found, you came across some words, some terms, maybe a method, and you decided, well, I'm going to go learn how to do what I'm already doing. And that's when, you know, I feel like that was a really critical moment for you because you were like, okay, wait, suddenly I don't remember how to do what I'm doing naturally. So I have a feeling there are going to be a lot of people listening to this podcast that are really going to relate to that. So could you talk a little bit more about how you found your way back? Yeah, I, um, you know, I teach animal communication as well, like how people can actually listen to the animals, like, and speak with the animals, not just to the animals. So I, I teach mm. that. I pretty much did every mistake there was. And um, like I said, when I started, there wasn't really anybody around. So again, when I took that course, um, it was really interesting because first of all, when I, when I went there to take, to take the course, there was three or four courses going for going on at the same time, which was wow. beginners in advanced and teacher. And so I went there, there were around hundred people. So I thought everybody was a beginner. And like I said, because I did communicate with animals, but I didn't know that I did communicate, right? It was just a, it, it exchange of information, it wasn't a QA. and a So when, when I went there, and so literally I basic, 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 and everybody else in this group they already have done that. They communicated here. And then I thought, I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong Serbian <laughs> office, you know? And so, like I said, when I came home, everything was gone. And I was so disappointed. I was so unhappy because it was all gone. But then what happened? Like, I didn't hear nothing. And then what happened? A couple of my friends heard that I took this animal communication course. So they called me and said, so thinking that, you know, you take a one and a half day course and you know how to communicate with animals, Absolute, right? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. <laughs> you know? Of course, yeah. They, yeah. Easy, right? Just no problem. Yeah, absolutely. So, so they called me and said, and it wasn't, they said, Claudia, you got to talk to my dog. Is he ready to die? So it wasn't, that's my dog on a bone. I was really thrown, in, thrown into the deep end. And so I had to struggle and somehow make it. So now when I, when I teach people how to communicate with animals, um, like I said, I've done all the mistakes. I started from scratch. And a lot of people, they come to me now and say, Claudia, I've taken three, four courses and it's not working. And you, you're my last try. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And there's so much because of, like I said, what I learned and starting and then, and then. So th there's a lot of stuff that, doesn't get taught in a lot of courses, which are so much the fundamentals. And once you work with that, you, you can learn it. But again, the thing is that you don't learn it overnight. I mean, English is my second language. And as you know, the listeners listen, like here, I still make some mistakes. You know, I'm trying hard, but I know I still, like usually when I listen to something that was recorded, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. That's grammar, you know? <laughs> so, so it's the same thing, but we got to, start somewhere right and the first thing is the awareness that we can communicate with animals and they with us and then another thing what's really important what's very deep to my heart is first of all it's the animal communication but the second of all is the misinformation the misknowledge that actually exists about animals because and that's where a lot of people actually have the problems hearing animals because They've been taught so many things that are not right because what we have to do is we have to see things from the animal's perspective. Because what we know about animals is literally, literally all from our human perspective. So what we do, we watch animals and then we judge them through our eyes. How would we solve this problem? And then we, we judge the results and that's not how it works. If somebody throws you in with some lions and you're, you're faced with a lion problem, don't use your human thinking. And that's what we do. We see an animal and use our human thinking. So there's so much misinformation that people that have been told their entire lives. For example, they've been told that animals don't know time, which is absolutely not true. So then when an animal tells you, oh, you said, you know, time, 
And people say, no, they can't know that. They don't know that. But how do you know that? Have you ever spoken to a dog, to a horse, to a fish? Like if you say to a horse companion, I'll come on Wednesday, I'll be there at noon, and then you're not there. Oh, my horse doesn't know. Yes, your horse knows. You just lie to your horse, and then you come, and the horse is nervous. Why is the horse nervous? Nothing happened. No, you were two hours late, and your horse companion didn't know what happened to you. So there's a lot of blockages by the wrong information, the misinformation that most people have. And that's one big thing too that I usually incorporate because this is this is like I said, this is one it's so important to my heart to really set the record straight. And to just, I mean, just just what a glorious adventure to be able to uh, try on a different life for size and and you know to to kind of in you know invite a, a fresh perspective. You know, I, 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 I've always loved turtles and tortoises. And right now I'm caring for um, a red-footed tortoise named Malti, who, who's been with me since she was a hatchling. And she's, you know, small and she's kind of slow and she's low to the ground. And one of my favorite things to do is get down on my belly and look at her in the eye and, and crawl around with her on the floor and see what the world looks like. Yeah. from that level. And I see things, um, some things are great, some things maybe not so great, but I see things so differently. And my neural connections love it. Um, my tortoise loves it. And it's, you know, when you're that, when you're, when you're, you know, six inches off the ground or whatever, there aren't too many people that, that you can look at in the eye. And, and so, you know, and I can feel that, like that eagerness to share her world with me and, you know, just kind of giving ourselves for those of you who are watching and listening, I, I have a feeling there are so many things that people can relate to. Um, and there's so many different points that the, so many different pathways we could take with this conversation, but just giving yourself the gift of just, you know, get down on, get down to your animals, to have your pet, have a pet's eye view of of the world around you, see what they see, smell what they smell, um, feel what they feel. And I wouldn't necessarily go so far as to say eat what they eat, but you know, really just um, give yourself the gift of that fresh perspective. Um, especially if you're listening to this and you're feeling kind of stuck and you're like, I'm stuck at work or I'm stuck in my relationships or whatever. This is an awesome way to unstick yourself. And it is a great gift that caring for an animal can give to us. So I love that, that I, one of the things I love the most when I found your website and honestly, now, you know, you know what the internet is like, you know, we don't often understand how we find, find someone, but, um, I remember landing on your website and, and reading that, you know, you just, animals are the same as us. And, you know, and I often share with my clients and on these podcasts that I feel like if you didn't tell me that I was talking to a dog or a horse or a parrot, I might not necessarily clue in right away. And, um, you know, so I, I'd love for you to share a little bit more about that and some of your experiences and how you help people who are struggling to even believe that it's possible, let alone that their pets are actually trying to talk to them. Like, how, how do you how do you help people like embrace that and have that experience? Not that they're not having it, but 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 accept it and trust it and let it be there's there's a few things one is first of all again so many people think you know there's humans and there's animals so i say think about it this way like we humans we love to travel right we love to see different countries different cultures and by seeing that, that enriches our lives. I mean, um, let's say you love to go to Italy, just the food. Oh, you know what I mean? And, and people then, you know, at lunchtime, they take, they take a few hours off or something, you know? So you're embracing, you, you're learning, right? Because if everything would be like Houston, Texas, why would you even travel? Yeah, right? yeah exactly. You, know, you travel to see and meet other people and grow. So I always say, don't see an animal as an animal. Don't see a dog as a dog. See the, or see the species as a culture. So now I'm going ah. to dog culture. 
I'm connecting with the turtle culture. And by just changing that word, it changes because then it's not like a different species. It's like something for, it's a culture. Get to know their culture. That's the first thing that I will say because that makes a huge difference, right? I mean, I came from the European culture. I came to the North American culture, especially to the Canadian culture, which was a totally, totally different, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I have dog and cat companions. When I adopted my first cat companion, I wanted to learn the cat culture, right? So see it as a culture and not, not as a different species. The other thing is too, when you, let's say you have a dog companion, don't see, don't say Charlie, my dog, it's Charlie, my best friend, Charlie, my family member. Take the animal out, the, the, the description. I mean, yes, a fish needs water to swim. We can't make a fish out of a human. And that's why I say we have to see it from their perspective. We have different physical needs, like men and women have mm -hmm. different needs, right? So the same, same thing, a dog needs space to run. A bird needs, you know, I, I love that you guys is free to fly around, right? Mm -hmm. So that we have i mean just like us i mean some people are introverted uh, some are extroverted right some so i mean people now you know when when the lockdowns they, they were getting depressed because they couldn't go out well they still could go out so so see that's the same thing so we see it so we have physical needs but see your animal as buddy your companion but don't make a human out of buddy because buddy has his needs which is he has to go out he has to sniff like we have to listen to the news but just open up that way and that already makes a huge difference and then just think what's possible and that's like i said that's why my passion comes in because people say if you talk to dog all the dog wants is to live in the country and have a bone i had a client once and yeah i had a client yeah, once right right and, um she we had a very we had a half hour session and she wanted to know if her, if her dog companion was lonely and wanted a companion. And he said, you know what, I would like you to work from home. And that was before, you know, uh, before COVID. She said, no, my boss won't allow that to me. Uh, well, I won't allow me to work from home. So he said to her, why don't you start your own business? And she said, you know what, I'm not a business person. I wouldn't even know what to do and how to do it. In a half an hour session, this dog gave her the, gave her the idea of what to do, a business plan, and then, then step by step, she followed it. A year later, she had five employees and made a million dollars. Her dog told her that. So, you know, you know, people think, again, what do you want to talk to dog about? I want a bone. No, like we have to open up like the possibilities just to be open. And that's a huge thing. And ask them and not just most people just tell things to the animal company why don't we ask them what they want and again at the beginning i mean um people say how do i do that well you might need a communicator to help you to understand your animal companion and like like i said when i was when i came to canada my best friend was my dictionary i didn't go anywhere without my dictionary i couldn't even go shopping without my dictionary right <laughs> because mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah but, but you know we, we learn right we learn and the more you know the, the easier it gets and and it's the more you communicate with animals and, and the more you learn i mean that's the same thing if you only have one dog or cat companion in your entire life you think they're all the same but no like i have five dog companions three cat companions at the moment and may not all different but you see it because you have multiple right then you see the different personalities so it's 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 absolutely in, in, incredible. It's absolutely incredible. So we have to be open, just be open to that there's more that we have been taught. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's part of me listening to you and, and thinking back to when I got started and I haven't been um, doing the work at, at nearly as long as you have, but I remember this my very first animal um, communication session, like for real, um, was, and I, I've shared this story quite a bit. For those of you who are listening to the podcast or watching and you've already heard it, um, my condolences, <laughs> it's coming out again. And it was, it was, an, it was an iguana. And, you know, I, because, because even though, um, you know, I have a special passion for exotic species, so-called exotics. I think we're all exotic, but, you know, I, I love, I've always loved um, all animals, but especially parrots and, and reptiles. And, um, you know, 
it, it's still, I just assume because most, most people um, that want animal communication, it seems like are asking for their cats or dogs or their horses. And so I just automatically assume that my teacher would give me um, a cat or a dog. And imagine my surprise when I, one of the first things I saw was this flash of yellow furless, I mean, no hair at all skin. And I was like, hmm, that doesn't look like a dog, you know, come to find out it's an iguana. And, um, you know, and it's, so it's just like, it's, it's just being, being opening up and receiving what comes in. And that's what intrigues me so much about, cause I had a similar experience to what you shared. It's like, I, it took me a while and it actually, um, arose around the time that, that my dad was going through hospice, where I started to really wake up and realize what I was experiencing was an, was empathic connection with deep intuition. And it's not that I hadn't been on the path my whole life. I'd just been distracted by life <laughs> and other things and other career paths and things like that. And so I started to, to kind of realize I've, I've already been doing this. And then I decided I was going to go to school and I was going to learn a method. And I had to struggle when that school didn't turn out to be a good fit for me. And I parted ways with the teacher and the school and had to come back to my way. And so that's, that's something else I really want to emphasize for, for anyone who's, who's watching and who's listening and who's thinking, I, you know, I have to go to school you know, that's our, that's part of the, you know, the, the mental lives that we live, the mentally driven lives, the left brain driven lives that we live. It's like, I've always been a huge fan of one-on-one -on -one mentoring um, versus going to school. I was never really huge as an introvert. I was never really huge fan of going to school and being surrounded by lots of other beings. It was just super distracting to me. It was made it hard to learn. And so, you know, I, I what helped me overcome the structure, the, 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 the overly enthusiastic structure of the school and saying, you can only do it this way and you have to do it in this order. And it has to be this Q and a thing that you were talking about was finding um, a couple of mentors that I worked with one-on-one -on -one. and, you know, just, just practicing with their animals and having them point out how it works for me and how that's different than how it works for other students and other people. It's, awesome to learn. There's nothing wrong and everything right about opening yourself up to lots of different ways to communicate and lots of different methods. And it's one of the reasons I started this podcast is to have the opportunity to connect with other communicators and to learn. Being a perpetual student is a good thing. It keeps us open-minded. It keeps us open-hearted, you know, yeah. but but exactly. saying to yourself, because it's not working this way, that means I'm either I'm doing it wrong or I'm not doing it. It's not a thing. It's like, don't do that to yourself. You know, give yourself the chance to discover how it works within you. And I, I want, I want to, yeah, you, you were just about to say something else on that as well. So yeah, sorry for interrupting. Yeah, because it's so important because we have to know that there's either two stages in life. You either learn or you die. And that doesn't mean that you right? Totally There's some incentive for you. Really great, right? So you know, absolutely. We, we never we never finished learning. I mean, even if you think about that, um, if I if I like I pretty much just now use, you know, English, right? And if I sometimes speak with people in Germany, then all of a sudden, I never heard that word. But the, even the language, ah. you know, like grows, right? I mean, when I first started telepathy, like, what is that? Like, it, it grows. Like, you, you still can't really explain what it is. Like, there's no really words there yet. But that's the thing. We, we always grow. We always grow. We always expand. That's what it's about. And that's the same with, with when we communicate with animals, right? And we have to take time because how long did it take you to learn the English language? Like, you know, for me being the second law, like your mother tongue, I should say. Your, your, your English is amazing. I mean, it's flawless. I, 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 I only know English and, and um, there's still always more to learn. So how about that? <laughs> you know? see, so the same thing, like it took me a few years, right? And, and so the same thing, when you start communicating with your animals, 
you can't do it on a, on a weekend thing. It shows you how to do it. And that's why I also love and I do the one-on-one -on -one as well, because what you can what you can do is again, you see where is somebody, because when we when you are telepathic, there's different channels that are open. And you have to find the one that you're using right now, build on this and then open up. So if you use channel A and you have a teacher who says, no, you have to use channel D, mm -hmm. it won't work. It won't work. So you got to find your channel, get stronger in it, and then you develop all the other ones. Exactly. That's exact, and that's exactly what I experienced with my first, you know, structured school environment. It was you have to use channel B, and it was like I didn't. My I I use channel A, you know, and 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 I'm developing, I'm learning, um, and you know what what many animal communicators find is, you know, we've been studying what, you know, like, like you so beautifully said, our mother tongue, since we were little learning uh, both organically and structurally. Um, so there shouldn't be the expectation that if you, even if you reawaken to something you've kind of been doing organically throughout your life and just didn't realize it, you know, there when there's a desire to um, have a really deep and meaningful conversation with any other being, um, it this takes it takes practice. Just learning deep listening, just um, just really tuning into the energy. You know, supposedly eighty or ninety percent of conversation is nonverbal anyway, which makes animal communication a slam dunk for learning all the other facets of how communication happens. You know, it's like, I can go out in the next room and have a conversation with my mother and we could, we might have a misunderstanding. And I mean, That's heck, nice. we've known each other my whole life, you know? So it's like, we can't expect, animal communication isn't like, you know, a crystal ball or a magic wand or it's a conversation. It and involves over time, you know? And, and there's with, pra other, with lots of practice. Right. So. But there's another point too, what a lot of people don't realize is because as you said, you know, you, you speak the same language with your mom, you're the same species and you still have miscommunication. And that's why so many people fight because it was a miscommunication. But what's important too, because a lot of people say, okay, I talk to my dog and he doesn't understand what I'm saying because he doesn't do it. But there's also... It's very important what you say, but how you say it. And most people don't teach that either. So we are actually saying it wrong. It's the same thing. If, if I teach you German and I teach you right means left and left means right for whatever reason, right? So we come to an inter intersection um, or you come with another person to an intersection and in German would say, turn right. But I taught you right is left. So you're turning left. And then this person would say, hello, you know, what planet are you from? And then it's blaming you, mm -hmm. but I taught you wrong. So the same thing, many times animals don't listen because we saying it wrong and nobody has taught you how to correctly say things. That's where a lot of people also kind of um, uh, get tripped up and then they say animals don't understand it. Yes, they do, but you said it the wrong way. So that's a big, big part as well on how what you can do right and wrong and again the animals get blamed for it or you know they, they don't listen they don't understand you said it wrong the human said it wrong not the animal mm -hmm. and there's an and i this is it's so meaningful to hear this because it's it, you know it's also occurs to me i i happen to be blessed if you will with a very difficult dog um my mother's dog who is deep and sensitive and 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 wild and um very uh, anxious and just he's just got so much going on he's like a full-time job to build a relationship with him and it's like no he understood okay he got it you know he just said no and it's like, you know, conversation become, it becomes a, a, you know, a reminder of what you said at the very start of our, of our conversation here today, that, you know, talking with an animal means talking with them, not at them. We're not, it's not about, well, the dog isn't, or the animal or whatever, isn't doing what I want them to do 
because they don't understand or whatever. It's like, well, it does either doesn't make sense to them. It's not good for them. They don't want to. Um, they, they do want to, but there's another obstacle in their way. You know, it's, it's like really taking that, you know, the, the conversation away from being, you know, unifaceted or like a storefront and like turning it around and going like, what's on all sides of this converse? Like what's really happening in this conversation and just trying on lots of different perspectives for size. Um, and you mentioned, I know you have a free tool on your website and I, I'm so intrigued by the title of it. Um, you know, how well does your animal com uh, uh, companion really understand you? And it's like, even that you kind of flip the the script a little bit and you know it's like we talk about you know do do we understand animals but it's like maybe again maybe you're not saying it right does your animal companion understand you do they understand you well are you sharing with accuracy and depth and insight or are you just kind of throwing it out there because you got a lot of shit on your plate today and you just need them to get with the program already, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's supposed to be a PG show, but it just came out. <laughs> okay. We only had one so far, so we are good. I know, good. I know, I know, I know. That's so funny. Um, so I know. Meanwhile, my parent has migrated over to the pillow. Um, uh, and is I know and is just singing up a storm and we love it don't we so we're at that point in our program where I want to encourage everyone who's listening or watching us to you know consider um why were you drawn to a program about let's talk to animals and not you know get fit in four days or, you know, how to, how to work on weekends from the beach in Waikiki. You know, it's like, there's so many different podcasts out there. Why are you listening to this one? By the way, we're really happy to have you. We would love to, to, uh, to hear from you. We'd love if you would like to leave us a five-star review or ask us questions or make requests. Um, thank you for listening and watching. And thank you for your interest in giving the animals in your life a voice and a choice, um, but I, I really want to encourage you, you know, my, my very first experiences of animal communication were hiring animal communicators, you know, not to make this too, too much of, a, of, a, of a, a, a sales pitch here, but, you know, consider it, consider whether, you know, talking with your pet is on your bucket list. Consider whether you might want to explore this further. Um, Claudia has lots of free, um, uh, videos and blog posts and articles and resources on her site. I do as well. I would love to encourage you to head over to animallovelanguages.com, which is where Pearl and I, come here, sweet baby. Oh, come to mommy. That's what we've got. What we've got here, for those of you who are watching, is a little pillow bus. He scampered over to the pillow and jumped on, and I just pulled it over and retrieved my avian. So um, you got to love that. But uh, if you head over to animallovelanguages.com, uh, you, can, you, can, you can check out uh, the Learn With Me tab. You can find a free five-day animal communication camp uh, where you can learn about five different ways that animals will uh, send us information. Oh, and who is this cutie? Those of you who are only listening and not watching are really missing out right now. Who is this cutie pie? His name is Chai, and he has a quite an interesting story as oh. well. He's wonderful. Well, he's just adorable. He's just adorable. Absolutely precious. Ah, full of animals around here. We love it. Um, you know, consider um, scheduling a, a session with myself, with Claudia to explore animal communication, um, enjoy some one-to-one -one mentoring, um, you know, uh, follow along our journeys and, and invite us to follow along with you as well, because we are all about interspecies communication around here, often at the top of our lungs. And um, I just, I want to thank you, Claudia, for, for being a part and for taking the time. And um, again, you can reach Claudia at claudiahehr.com. And you can reach me at animallovelanguages.com. And more importantly, you can reach Pearl. <laughs> 
as well. And um, I just, I just want to close with a message of encouragement. If you have found this, this podcast or blogcast helpful, um, or if you know somebody who would find the encouragement helpful or has need um, for a deeper conversation with their beloved pet, please, um, you know, pass it along, pass us along and, um, and, and give a gift that will continue to teach you more about the other species we share this planet with and, and ultimately uh, will teach you more about yourself um, in a way that you never, probably never expected or dreamed would be possible. So any last words of encouragement for our listeners and our viewers, Claudia? Um, absolutely. First of all, thanks again for being you know, inviting me to your enjoy and vlog. Oh, and thank you for listening. For being here. And just listening is the first step. And literally, um, think about this as an adventure and not mm -hmm. what should I do. So it's sort of the same thing. Um, you know, when you go to work every day, okay, I have to do this is Monday after this is Tuesday. But when you go on a holiday, you kind of are open. So see this as an adventure journey and let it lead you. Don't have a dot by dot by dot and see how it goes. But it's absolutely incredible. And a lot of people I know, um, they are kind of afraid to talk actually with the animal companion because they're worried what they might say. Don't yeah. be, don't be. I mean, there are, we deep down, we really are all the same, but there are some differences between humans and animals. So humans, uh, animals will not say, remember nine years ago when you did this and this and this yeah. no <laughs> so so yeah. it's it's nice it's sort of like if you have a friend your best friend who speaks a different language that you don't speak and you kind of like you know like every time you get together you kind of somehow you know make it work but then all of a sudden somebody speaks both of your languages and then can really translate and really you really can get to know your friend and what always happens, people always say that to me after the first session, it's sort of like all of a sudden your relationship really deepens mm -hmm. because you go to the next level and your animal companions, they are so grateful for that because so many animals say to me, you know what, nobody has ever spoken to me. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And it's absolutely, absolutely wonderful. And when you communicate with the animals, when you have a session, Make sure that you ask your animal companion and give them all the time to talk to you and tell you things. So you see things from their perspective. What a beautiful encouragement for all of us, myself included. It's, it's a joy and an honor to be a part of the interspecies communication community um, and to connect with you, Claudia. Um, appreciate the great conversation. And I hope all of you who are watching and listening have enjoyed it as well. And um, please know you're part of the Let's Talk to Animals family. And we, um, we'd love to hear about your adventures as well. So until next week, um, saying goodbye for now. And um, again, Claudia Hare, H-E-H-R.com and AnimalLoveLanguages.com. And we hope we will see you there very soon. Okay. Bye for now.